just miracles and I mean causing the main to be whole. That's still the one that just boggles my mind. People coming up and their legs cut off, and Lord's touching them and their leg regrows. People coming up and their legs cut off, and Lord's touching them and their leg regrows. People coming up and their legs cut off, and Lord's touching them and their leg regrows. People coming up and their legs cut off, and Lord's touching them and their leg regrows. But uh, just a real neat answer to prayer. Um, the video that I did about the attacks, current attacks on the ministry, um, there were two cases, open cases left. Of the guy, I, you know, showed his information, things just, 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 you know, showed his information, things just to, to show people how these infiltrators work and everything else. And uh, so, uh, people that try to infiltrate, we're going to be able to have access to their full name, address, the whole deal. We're going to be able to have access to their full name, address, the whole deal. We're going to be able to have access to their full name, address, the whole deal. Uh, unlike dealing with liberals that don't protect, uh, leaving Christians like you know myself and you if you're a friend of the ministry. All right, just gave me a quick video exposing Brian Dunlinger's complete ignorance of the meaning of your proceed what's being taught in Romans 14, and also his overall willful ignorance of the Catholic uh, holiday from hell known as Christmas or Christ Mass, as the Catholics call it. You know, I've always said it's very funny how somebody who's so vehemently against Romanism, the Satanic cult of Rome, is also so vehemently defensive of their one of their biggest high days of Christ Mass. You know. It's kind of odd to say the least, but I'm going to show a clip from the uh, one of his videos where just notice just the willful ignorance on display, okay? Notice how when Brian Dillinger says it's in Romans 14, and at one point he says, you know, it's there, it's listed, referring to, you know, uh, what he's trying to say about liberty, about how liberty, essentially you can celebrate any kind of high day you want, regardless of its pagan origins, okay? Check this out. Okay, but uh, the thing with Christmas is, it is listed in the Bible in Romans chapter 14. One man esteems one day above. Uh, let me get the scripture here so I'm not misquoting it. Um, one man esteemeth one day above another. Another man esteemeth every day alike. This is a thing here. First of you have diet. Okay. Um, right here you have the thing of diet. Somebody wants to be a vegetarian? Fine. No problem. Somebody wants to eat a lot of meat? Fine, no problem. We're told there's liberty there, okay? You're not supposed to um, despise him that eateth not, right? That's fine. Then it goes into the thing of esteeming one day above another. And there again, liberty. So if I say to everybody out there, because I celebrate a form of Christmas, get into that here in a minute, um, because I celebrate a form of Christmas, you have to as well. It's a feast day of the Lord, and you cannot get away from it. That'd be wrong. But then somehow it's not wrong to say that you can't celebrate it. See? But it's clearly listed as liberty. So somebody comes out and says, there's no exceptions. Absolutely not. You can't have anything to do with it because it's not mentioned in the Bible. Nobody celebrated the birth of Jesus Christ, or nobody celebrated Christmas, or whatever else. Um, you're going against the Scripture. You're going against the Holy Spirit of God. So, like I said before, you'll notice that he says in the clip uh, how it's in Romans 14. He's like, see, it's there. It's listed. Okay? So, essentially, we have liberty to esteem one day above another, regardless of its heathen origins, is what he's essentially trying to push. You can, you can, His followers can try to deny it all they want. That's, what, that's essentially the logical conclusion. You know, you're, you, can, you can do any holiday you want as long as you're doing it unto the Lord. So, we can do Halloween now, apparently, because, you know, as long as we just find some way to add Jesus Christ to it. You know, so essentially we have learned we have liberty to learn the ways of the Catholic heathen uh, and essentially become Catholic for a day. You know, and Brian twists Romans 14, 5, uh, which is uh, he's, he's twisting what it's saying about esteeming one day above another. He thinks it's meaning that that any holiday is OK. OK, is that what the text is saying in context that go just that goes down to Romans 14, verse 9? See, he doesn't really go past Romans 14, 5. OK. See, he's taking you out of context. Essentially, he and his followers read that verse and think any holiday is liberty as long as it's esteemed to the Lord. Again, by this logic, if we are consistent with this logic, it means that Halloween is okay as long as we find some way to esteem it to the Lord. Okay, the bottom line is you don't have liberty to learn the ways of the heathen, and you most certainly don't have liberty to defile the name of Christ by adding it to this heathen Catholic custom. Okay, thus mixing the holy with the profane. 
mixing the holy name of Jesus, the name above every name, with the profane Catholic custom of Mystery of Babylon known as Christmas. Okay, uh, Let's go through some scriptures on the matter that Brian seems to kind of overlook on this issue. Ezekiel 22, verse 26. Her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and the profane. Neither have they showed difference between the clean and the, uh, sorry, the unclean and the clean, and have hid their eyes from my Sabbath, and I am profaned among them. That's, that's what you're doing when you're adding, you're busy defiling, defiling the name of Christ by adding him to this heathen Catholic high day of Christ Mass. Uh, Second Chronicles. 36 14 moreover all the chief of sorry all the chief of the priests and the people transgressed very much after all the abominations of the heathen and polluted the house of the lord which he had hallowed in jerusalem again perfect description jeremiah 10 verse 2 thus saith the lord learn not the way of the heathen and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven for the heathen are dismayed at them oh but you see i guess we have actually have liberty to learn the way of the heathen as long as we just add jesus christ to it you know, again, they're going to say I'm strawmanning him. That's the logical conclusion of this argumentation of, well, you know, we're just esteeming it unto the Lord. So then really there's, no, there's nothing wrong with Halloween then. There's nothing wrong with celebrating Ramadan, the, the pagan Islamic idea of, of Ramadan, as long as we just add Jesus Christ to it. It's paganism. It's wicked. But continuing on to more scriptures, this is actually written to the Old Testament, you know, nation of Israel. But I'd like to say three simple words in regards to that. You know, because they'll say, well, that's the Old Testament Israel. Well, here are three simple words in response to that. Instruction in righteousness. Okay. Second Timothy 3, verse 16 to 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it's profitable for doctrine, for proof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Uh, Romans 15, 4. For whatsoever things are, were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. And also, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 11. Now all these things happen unto them uh, for examples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Okay, so yeah, it was written, it was written to Old Testament Israel, but instruction in righteousness. You don't have liberty to, to mix the holy and the profane. You don't have liberty to uh, observe this Catholic heathen custom and defile the name of Jesus Christ by adding him to it. You know, it's, it's complete hypocrisy to oppose Halloween, but defend Christmas under the guise of liberty. It's hypocrisy. If we can just, if we have liberty to celebrate Christmas by adding Jesus to it, then we also have liberty to celebrate Halloween by adding Jesus to it. That's the log logical conclusion if you're consistent with this type of logic. Okay, yes, it was indeed written to Old Testament Israel, so apparently instruction in righteousness only counts when you decide it does, apparently. That's kind of how, that's kind of, that's the vibe I'm getting, quite frankly, is it's only instruction in righteousness when Brian Dillinger and his followers say it is so, okay? Christmas is Catholic, and it's not, it's, it's just, and sorry, and just as it's not liberty to learn the ways of the Catholic occult high day of Halloween, it's also, you don't have liberty to learn the Catholic heathen high day of Christmas. Again, it's hypocritical to, to rightfully condemn Halloween as the Catholic, you know, occult day that it is, but then defend Christmas despite the fact that it's Catholic it's a Catholic holiday. And Brian Dillinger is not ignorant of the fact that it's Catholic. I have clips of him openly admitting it's a Catholic holiday. So he's not ignorant of this. So that's why I say it's willful ignorance on Brian Dillinger and his cult. So anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.